Hello, today's topic is part B about leading effective discussions. And it really en enhances our students' learning in addition to retention and application. So as a reminder, let's go back and see what we talked about before. Effective questions could be described as the single most inf influential teaching act because of the power of questioning to impact student thinking and learning. Now, let me remind you again, discussion is an immensely powerful strategy, but let me repeat, when done well. So now we're going to be focusing on that to making sure that you are doing very well in creating these questions. So. What is our, our learning objective for today? You're going to classify and you're going to start to begin creating your own types of questions for your discussion sections. Here they are. We're going to focus on three strategies during this video. They are, number one, what type of questions to ask. Number two, when and whom do you ask. And number three, how you respond. The first one, we are calling it the opening questions. And so instead of uh, providing a summary or an overview at the beginning of the class, ask an opening question. Now remember from the active learning videos, if you've already seen those, I talk about the most important part of a class is the first 10 minutes because that is the greatest retention. So you might as well set the stage for the students to literally not only physically but cognitively be in that space and prepared to talk about the topic. So what opening questions did I ask of you today in this module? What do you think is the most common active learning strategy? The second question I ask, when the question and answer session is doing well, it looks like this. Or not doing well, it looks like this. Now, can you tell me why you think that those are particularly effective opening questions? Well, one, the first one is, you don't really have to think about it. It's because you looked at the beginning of the of the slide. You also knew about the topic on a syllabus if you provided on there. So you can just start from there and have the students begin talking. And you can do that instead of saying today's topic is. The second question is particularly effective because it refers to a situation that should be common or known to all of you. So I'm drawing on your own experience. I'm not looking for a textbook um, answer. So I'm going to get you to start thinking and actually to think first before I start the actual content lesson. The second one you should learn is about types of questions. I want you to look at this question. Then look at this question. Do you see the difference between those two? Is it partly cloudy today? Yes, no. That's all you need to do. The second question is, what are the reasons for stocks to fall? And it may take a whole variety of responses. It could be personal reasons. It could be based on the textbook or things like that. So when we say this, yes or no, that means it only needs one or two words. And those are what we call close-ended questions. The other one needs more, more words, an explanation, and things like that. And those are called open in it because it requires more thought to answer. And the student's going to have to draw from several different areas or, or sources to answer the question. Now, the bottom three questions that I'm about to show you are also examples of open-ended questions. Why is it the correct choice to abandon the strategy? How can you improve this poster? And what if there was a worker strike on the public transportation? Again, those are all open-ended questions, but they serve specific purposes of why, how, and what if. And the what if is particularly interesting because it pulls on the higher level of Bloom's taxonomy. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So here's an activity. I want you to think of a particular class session, a 50-minute class or an hour and 20-minute class. What is that topic? On a piece of paper, write down that topic. And then I want you to write five open-ended questions, close-ended, open-ended, why, how, or what if, as opening questions, as opening questions before you begin your class. And I'll wait for you to do that.
Were you able to do that? I hope if you were stuck that you asked your colleagues around you. The third kind of question is what levels of questions to ask. And in this case, I'm talking about Bloom's taxonomy. Now, you've probably heard of Bloom's taxonomy. I'm not sure. So let me check to see what you know. Have you never heard of this? I've heard of it, but I'm not quite sure what it means. Oh, I do have some idea about it, but no, I'm not really clear. I don't think I can explain it to you. And what? Oh, I do have a clear idea, and I can tell you what exactly what it means and how valuable it is. So what I just did, if you can remember, was an active learning strategy called a background probe. And this is very good because you can ask that so you can start setting the stage for your discussion method. Now, let's go back. Do you know this man? Do you remember? You may have seen different images of him. He's Benjamin Bloom. And he lived between 1913 and 1999. And what is he known for? Well, he's an American educational psychologist. And most importantly, he did research on the classification of thinking skills in 1956. He essentially really did is to create a framework, which he looked about low versus high level of thinking. The high level is called critical thinking. And it was called Bloom's taxonomy. But you may not know that he's also known for mastery learning, this concept. And what it means is that you need to identify the levels of proficiency for our students to master the highest level and then the steps in order to do that. Because if you do identify the steps, then you say, this student has mastered this particular level of proficiency and that you gave enough support and then they can move on. So that is Benjamin Bloom. Why am I going to focus on it? Because of the Bloom's taxonomy, which was revised in 2000, 2001. As a reminder, there were six levels um, in this Bloom's taxonomy. And the higher level at the top, the lower order is on the bottom. You were introduced to this many, many times already in writing your learning objectives. And you can see each time that I start my uh, video for you that I start with learning objectives so that everyone knows what is the outcome that we desire. Now. Think about the first three, the bottom three as the low level, and the top three as the high level. Our high level is the what you might call the critical thinking skills. It's a little bit hard to distinguish between um, level three and four, which is apply and analyze, but don't worry about it, because those are very discrete distinctions. Now, in your handout, I gave you a two-page um, description about the Bloom's taxonomy. The first page talks about the cognitive domain. These are the noun parts. It describes what is the topic or the knowledge domain that you are going to be asking about or that they need to know about. On the second page is regarding the cognitive dimension, and these are the verbs. It focuses on what is it the necessary skills or behaviors to represent the levels of thinking from remember all the way up to the highest level of create. Now, we had focused primarily on this for learning objectives, but you know what? Bloom's taxonomy, I just absolutely love it because there's another value for it. And that is to create questions. And if you look in the handout and also on my slide right here, you can see that there are examples under each column or level of, the, of Bloom's taxonomy that gives you examples of the types of questions that you can use that ensures that you are asking your students to exhibit the behavior or to demonstrate the level of thinking that you want. Do you think you got it? I'm going to give you a second. Review your notes. Make sure you're, you're looking at it, and you can clearly differentiate among them. OK, you think you got it? Mm, let's check, because I know you're going, I got it, Shalon. So here it is. Here's an activity. I want you in a piece of paper. I want you to look at each one. I helped you out, because you see, oh, that brain icon, that means you're going to be working. And on to the right of it, I gave you the levels. Create, evaluate, and an analysis, apply, understand, remember. What you're going to do is for each of these examples, I want you to tell me whether it's low or high, 
and which specific level it is. So I'm going to let you go. You're, I'm going to give you another hint. You only have to do each one once. You're going to use each of the level only once. All right, you ready? Let's see what you know and see if you really mastered the Bloom's taxonomy. What is the definition of whatever this topic is? Low. Remember, how would you do this? It is high and it's create. What will happen? Prediction. It's high and you have to analyze. What would be an example of something? That's low and apply. What are the first five steps? It's low and understand. And is something superior to other techniques? That's high and evaluate. So I hope that you were able to do very well. If not, go back and review it. Because you need to make sure that you're asking the question at the appropriate level to get there on there. And the easiest ones are always the low one, but that's not what you want. You want the students to think deeply and, and very critically. So let's go back. Classify and create different, which we did. We talked about opening questions. We talked about different types of questions. We also talked about different levels of questions. Now we have to think about appropriate types of questions. Oh, there's that brain icon. I'm going to have to have you work again. So here's the activity. Think of one of your class sessions and write the topic again. Remember the first thing you did was to write the opening questions. Now we're going to continue on in your discussion. I want you to write one low level question and write one high level question. I will wait for you to do that. Now, in the directions I didn't say think about, I said write down those questions. Why did I have you do this? This is a very important step that I want you to do all the time. So here's a story. I've got lots of stories for this session. So imagine that you're an actor in a very important uh, upcoming movie. There's this great director. You have great other actors with you. And you just start walking into the stage and you say, start your role, right? No. You are given a script, a script that tells you where to stand, what to say, how to say it because there is a very specific message that you are transmitting as an actor. It's the same thing here as um, being a teacher. You need to think about where you're going, where you're standing, how you behave, what's the tone, and of course that you write the question very precisely. And that is called scripting. So please don't forget that you must script, and script means not just think about, but also write down in your lesson plan the kind of questions you're going to uh, uh, write and ask and when you're going to do this. So what did we just master today? Classify and create different types of questions, different levels of questions, different opening questions, and don't forget to make them appropriate you must make sure that you also include scripting, which means writing it out ahead of time so that you know when to do it. This concludes Part B of Leading Effective Discussions.